Hello everyone, I am Harsha AJ. Today I am with you to discuss about probability distributions. So let us try to understand the first definition in probability distribution that is random variable. Uh, before starting with this particular video, I assume you know the basics of probability. So whenever it is required, I will help you. So first we will try to understand the definition of random variable. So random variable means generally it is denoted by r dot v so wherever i write r v which means random variable so a random variable is a function that assigns a real number to every sample point in the sample space of a random experiment random variable is generally denoted by capital x or y or z and so on so what is the meaning so that represents a function so domain is always a sample space range represents real numbers so that is called random variable let us try to understand this definition with two simple example so first i will take while tossing a coin suppose the value 1 associated for the outcome head and 0 for tail what is the meaning i will toss a coin if head comes i will take the number as 1 it is my wish you can take any number if tail comes, I will take it as 0. Now, what is the sample space? Sample space means, you know, it is all possible cases, right? So, when you toss a coin, what are the possibility? Either I have to get head or I have to get tail. Therefore, S equal to H and T. H represents head, T represents tail. Now, what you mean by random variable for this is X equal to 0 and 1. Why? In the initially I told right if head comes I will take it as 1 if tail comes I will take it as 0 therefore see x represents variable vari random variable it starts from sample space s to set of all real number so x of h means head goes to 1 x of tail goes to 0 it is my definition you can change according to your wish let us take one more simple example suppose a coin tossed twice that means I am tossing simultaneously two times. What are the possibility? This is a practical thing, right? Either I will get head head, head tail, tail head or tail tail. So in this case, we have four values for sample space. Yes. Now, random variable I can define in any way. So in this case, I will define random variable as number of heads in the outcome. Now tell me what are the possible values of x? When you draw coin toss two times both might be tail right in that case it becomes zero one head one tail means so by definition it is number of heads turning up therefore one if both are head so therefore the value of x is two therefore in this case we have five chances sorry four chances both are head one head one tail tail head and tail tail so x of both head goes to two x of head tail goes to 1, x of tail head goes to 1 and x of tail tail goes to 0. But remember, if the values are repeated, no need to write. See, here I have written 0, 1 and 2. Actually, 1 repeated twice, but I have not written. If you write once, it is sufficient. I hope you understood the definition of random variable. Now, <clears throat> before going for the content, first you remember outline of this entire model. Because many students, they will confuse with the distributions. So, in the entire model, you have to study this particular algorithm. So, what we have to study? First, we have to start with the definition of random variable. Just now, we have finished with the example. In random variable, we have to study two different types. One is discrete random variable. Second one is continuous random variable. Again, under the case of discrete random variable, we have two types. First one is binomial distribution, second one Poisson distribution. In the case of continuous also, we have two types. One is exponential distribution and one more is normal distribution. So just to try to remember this chart. I will repeat again. Basic is random variable. There are two types, discrete and continuous. In the case of discrete, binomial and Poisson. In the case of continuous, exponential and normal. In this module, I will just explain discrete random variable with example. 
in the next video i will explain about binomial and poisson distribution once we finish this part then we'll go for continuous random variable hope you understood right okay let us continue so as i mentioned first we will start with discrete random variable what is the definition of discrete random variable the name itself suggests right so the definition is if a random variable takes finite or countably infinite number of values then it is called discrete random variable that is the mathematical definition simple way the name itself suggests if random variable take discrete values then it represents discrete random variable for more clearance let us try to understand this definition with example say tossing a coin and observing outcome that is an example for discrete why if we say we got head you may take it as one if you get a tail we may take it as zero or vice versa you are wish but we cannot take 1.5 2.5 or 3.5 right that is meaningless so that's why this is an example for discrete tossing multiple coin and observing the number of heads turning up right that is also an example for discrete because it may take zero means both tail one head is possible or both head is possible so zero one two so there is no decimal values one more example for clear understanding the definition throwing a dice i hope you played snake and ladder right so throwing a die and observing the number on the face so what can you get you get 1 or you may get 2 3 4 5 up to 6 you may not get 1.5 it is not possible right you cannot get inti only you will get only integer values you won't get more than 6 also less than 0 also it is not possible only 1 2 3 up to 6 so this is also an example for discrete random variable i hope you understood the definition of discrete random variable now we'll go for conditions now what is the condition for discrete probability distribution you throughout this topic you remember these two condition what it says if for each value xi of a discrete random variable x we assign a real number as p of xi such that it has to satisfy two condition remember whenever you say it is discrete it has to satisfy two condition what is the first condition p of xi should be greater than or equal to 0 second one when you add all p of xi that is summation of p xi answer should be 1 so remember these two condition p of xi should be greater than or equal to 0 summation should be 1 now <clears throat> in the case of discrete probability distribution you have to remember these three formula the formula for mean variance and standard deviation for mean formula is summation xi into p of xi for variance formula is summation xi minus mu whole square mu means mean into p of xi or we simplified the formula that can be written as summation xi square into p of xi minus mu square this is the formula for variance and standard deviation is very simple as you know it is just a square root of variance so these three formula for discrete probability distribution kindly write down these three formula because again we have to study many formula in this case this is only for discrete okay okay so once you understood this formula in this video let us try to understand this concept with an example so for what we studied i'll just try to recall you first definition of random variable then we studied what is the meaning of discrete probability distribution then we studied formula for mean variance and standard deviation with conditions what are the condition p of x i should be greater than or equal to 0 summation should be 1 okay let us try to understand discrete with few examples first example a coin is tossed twice two times continuously they are tossing a random variable x represents number of heads turning up okay fine find the discrete probability distribution for x also find its mean and variance so it is very simple so first let us try to understand the concept what they are doing a coin is tossed twice so what is the sample space all possible cases so what are the cases you may get both head right so h h h t first time head second time tail or reverse t h first time tail second time head last possibility both are tail 
Now, what is the values of x corresponding to this sample space? What they are telling here random variable represents number of heads. Therefore, first case 2, ht means only one head, th means only one, tt means there is no head, so 0. So 2, 1, 1, 0. Again, I mentioned if the numbers are repeating, no need to write. Therefore, in this case, x equal to 0, 1, 2. Now, we have to prepare the table. How to prepare the table? In the first row, you write the value of x. What are the values of x? Just now we discussed 0, 1, 2. Correct? I have written. Now, second row is its probability. That is p of xi. Now, what is the meaning of xi equal to 0? 0 means no head, right? Uh, corresponding to the value of 0, p of xi means its probability we have to write. What is the probability? Now, xi equal to 0 means probability of getting 0 head. How to find the value? It's very simple. This is the basic definition. Denominator is all possible cases. Numerator is favorable cases. Okay. Now, what is the probability of getting 0 head? Only once, right? Because when you get both t, t, so only 1. So, numerator is 1. What is, why denominator is 4? All possible cases. That is, both head, one tail, one head, or reverse, last one, both tail. That's why I have written 4. So, first column corresponding to x i equal to 0, probability is 1 by 4. Next, x i equal to 1. What is the meaning? Only one head. What are the possible, all possible cases? Same. Denominator is 4. What are the favorable cases? Two times, right? Because ht and th. So, 2 by 4. When you simplify, 1 by 2. P of xi equal to 2 means what? Both should be head. That is only one possible cases, right? So, numerator is 1, denominator is 4. Therefore, second row is 1 by 4, 1 by 2, 1 by 4. Now, table is done. Now, we have to check whether it is discrete or not. How to check? Just remember the condition. What is the first condition? P of xi should be greater than or equal to 0. Is it true? Correct, no? See, 1 by 4, 1 by 2, 1 by 4. All are greater than or equal to 0. What is second condition? Summation should be 1. Add it. 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4. Therefore, it is equal to 1. Thus, this table represents discrete probability distribution table. Now, what they are asking? Once it is done, you find out its mean and variance. That is the formula, very simple. Mean equal to xi into p of xi. So, first case xi is 0, p of xi is 1 by 4, plus second case 1 into 1 by 2, plus 2 into 1 by 4. When you simplify, you get 1. Variance how to find? Same, summation xi minus mu whole square p of xi. Mu means, just now we found out 1. Substitute everything, simplify, you get answer as 1 by 2. Hope you understood, right? Okay. Now, let's move on to the second problem. Uh, what they are asking now, show that the following distribution represents discrete probability distribution and find its mean and variance. Anyway, they have already given the table. What we have to do? We have to show this represents discrete probability distribution. How to show? Very simple. Two condition, right? So, clearly all the values in the second row, that is P of X is greater than 0. You add it. Uh, 1 by 8 plus 3 by 8 plus 3 by 8 plus 1 by 8, it is 1. So, both the conditions are satisfied. This represents discrete probability distribution. Now, we have to find out mean and variance. I don't want to explain much. Same. Summation x into p of x. Multiply. Add it. Answer is 25. How to find variance? Same formula. Summation x minus mu whole square p of x. Mu represents 25 here. Substitute. Simplify. You get answer as 75. Okay, let us go for one more problem. Uh, this is important problem. A random variable x has the following probability function for various values of x. So, x they have given, p of x also they have given. Uh, but that is in terms of k. What they are asking? Find k, evaluate p of x greater than or equal to 6 and p of 3 less than x less than or equal to 6. Ah. Now, how to find k? It's very simple. Since it is a represents probability function, it has to satisfy two conditions, right? First condition is P of X should be greater than or equal to 0. Second condition is summation Px should be equal to 1. So, since summation should be equal to 1, you add all the values in the second row. So, 0 plus k, so on up to 7k square plus k. It should be 1. You simplify. 
you get quadratic equation as 10k square plus 9k minus 1 equal to 0. When you simplify, you get k as 1 by 10 or k equal to minus 1. You got two values. Now, which one we have to take? Yes, we have to take k as 1 by 10. Why? If you take k equal to minus 1, in the second row, some values becomes negative. Right? But that is not possible because first condition says each value should be greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, k is 1 by 10. Done. Now, what is the second question? They are asking p of x greater than or equal to 6. So, greater than or equal to 6 means x equal to 6 and greater numbers. right? So, p of x equal to 6 plus p of x equal to 7 because till 7 it is there. If it is 8, we have to take 8 also. Uh, p of x equal to 6 means how much? 2k square. p of x equal to 7 means 7k square plus k. We know the value of k that is 1 by 10. Substitute, simplify, you get 0.19. What is the second one? P of 3 less than x less than or equal to 6. Be careful. So, x should be greater than 3. So, start from 4. 5. Uh, x less than or equal to 6. So, up to 6. So, be careful with less than, greater than or less than or equal. Right? So, at x equal to 4, 3k. At x equal to 5, k square. At x equal to 6, 2k square. Substitute and k value is 1 by 10. Simplify. Answer is 0.33. So, with this, we will conclude this video. In the upcoming video, we will discuss about two types. That is what I mentioned in the beginning. That is binomial distribution, Poisson distribution. Have a nice day.